Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review The Dazzle of Day by Molly Gloss. The Dazzle of Day is a science fiction novel about a community of Quakers on a multi-generational journey from Earth to find a new home around another star. I've heard this book described as just Quakers in space, which was a good enough description to get me to read it. The story is about the people who live on the spaceship when they arrive at their destination after hundreds of years in transit. They have to decide whether they are going to actually try to live on the planet they've found or to go on somewhere else. And we see this story through the perspectives of a family, uh, Yuko, her son Cheho, her mother-in-law Christina, her husband Bioro, and her ex-husband Umberto. And their chapters interlock and show you certain events from different angles. This book hit me really hard when I was reading it, and I think that's because so much of it is about death. Many of the central events that the characters' lives revolve around at this moment are deaths. We see a lot of people processing their loss, their grief, even their anger over recent deaths as well as long ago ones. There is suicide, which is a growing trend from the anxiety and depression on the ship, but also there are deaths from old age, illnesses, and accidents. All of that really reminded me of a quote by Albert Camus, which is actually the epigraph to China Mountain Zhang, a novel that I think is very similar in some ways to The Dazzle of Day. And it says, a simple way to get to know about a town is to see how the people work, how they love, and how they die. And that quote pretty much perfectly describes what this story is. We are seeing this little town, a community inside of a spaceship, and how they work, how they live, all the people that they love, and yes, also how they die. And all of this is happening at a point of arrival and change as they have to decide whether they are going to stay and try to make a life on this new planet or to stay inside their ship and to just go on as they've always known it. There are some conversations about this choice at the end of the book and about belief, um, religious or spiritual, in God's world and in doing God's work that actually really resonated with me. I am not a religious person, but I think this conversation ultimately became one about how humans have to live in the world. We are not separate from nature no matter where we go. And no matter what we choose to do, there's always a possibility of failure. And one of the quotes that I liked from this book is about that. It says, it's true, there's no escaping the possibility of apocalypse. People just carry that possibility inside them. But nothing in life is certain, nothing but the circling round of things. I don't really know anything about the Quakers, but I did feel like a lot of their central beliefs and how they run their communities became a part of how this spaceship and all the communities within it were run. And that was really interesting. For example, the community meetings where at the beginning people just let themselves sink into silence until as one character says, it moves from the silence of people to real silence, the silence of God. And then people throw out their feelings, even this their impressions and dreams. And it's such a different way of listening to people. I really enjoyed that. I wouldn't say that this novel is about religion, but I do think it's a story where religious belief matters. Now, content warning. This story contains a scene of violent marital rape, and I know some people want to know about that before going into it. I also mention it because it's the one part of the book that I really did not like. It really jarred me out of my kind of comfy groove with the story. And upon further reflection, I have to admit that I think it isn't just included for shock value. It isn't just included because bad things need to happen. It has real repercussions and real pain associated with it. And the story kind of explores how that affects the character's relationships and even has ripple effects out to other people and the community because there's also kind of a community response to it. It was not enjoyable to read. 
but I do think it contributes to part of the complexity and realism of the story. This certainly is focused on the characters and the darker aspects of their lives, not just the positive things. The Dazzle of Day is one of those books I can say I found genuinely affecting while I was reading it. It is such a human story. It is very character driven rather than plot driven, and I really enjoyed seeing how the members of this one family saw each other, how they saw from different angles the things that were happening in their world, and then how they're a part of this bigger and yet very small community and a part of the, the world and the universe, I guess. Um, I also think that it may have really struck home for me because of my emotions when I read it. I probably read it at just the right time when things in my personal life and in my head were really clicking with what this book was talking about and showing. It's a story that I keep coming back to and thinking about and, and thinking about what it meant. And I think when a book can grab you that way, that's something to celebrate. And lastly, a geeky note. <laughs> this book uses Esperanto, which I thought was so cool. Esperanto is a constructed universal language, and I do know some of it. And it's used as part of like everyday life in the story and to describe the environment within the ship. And I just really enjoyed that. I don't think I'd ever encountered a novel before that used Esperanto. I have read Saga, which is a comic series that uses it at length as a, an alien language, and I've also really enjoyed that and thought it was really cool. So yes, The Dazzle of Day. I honestly had never heard of Molly Gloss until last year, and I've been incredibly impressed by both this book as well as her fantasy novella Outside of the Gates, which I've also done a review of. And I would definitely recommend her work if you've enjoyed anything by Ursula Le Guin, Maureen McHugh, or even Nicola Griffith. Let me know if you have read this book or anything else by Molly Gloss. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back to talk to you again. And until then, bye.